Harvey, it's, it's a Miss Elsie Greenwald. How are you today, Miss Greenwald? Oh, yes, my dear, that would be fine. Oh, I would be interested in joining your club. I belong to a number of clubs now. The Country Club, the University Club, the Pinochle Club, and the 4th Avenue Firehouse. I, I spend a good deal of my time there. And over at Charlie's Place, and Eddie's Bar. And, and what is your club, Miss Greenwald? Harvey, I get Ladies Home Journal, Good Housekeeping, and Open Road for Boys for two years for, for, for $6.25. Oh, yes, that's, that's fine. I'd like to join it. <coughs> How about you, Harvey? How's that sound to you? <laughs> Harvey says it sounds fine to him, too. He'd like to join also. Yes, yes, that's, that's two subscriptions. You mail everything to this address. I do hope I have the pleasure of meeting you sometime, Miss Greenwald. When? When would you like to meet me? Why not right now? My sister seems to be having a few friends in, and, and we'd be honored if you come and join us. My sister would be the wife. Uh, 343 Temple Drive. I uh, hope to see you in a very few minutes. Goodbye, <coughs> my dear. She's coming right over. Harvey, don't you think we'd better freshen up? Yeah, me too. Oh, my dear, where did I put the guest list? I have to call Miss Ellery. Uh, by the way, where's the guest list? I don't know, Mother. Oh, look up on my dresser. Mother, Mrs. Chauvinet, she's asking for you. Oh! Here's Mother, Mrs. Chauvinet, here she is. Lena Louise Simmons. I thought you were dead. <laughs> oh, and Temple. No, I'm very much alive. Thank you. And this full-grown girl is your daughter. I've known you since you were a baby. I know. What is your name, dear? <laughs> oh, and Ethel, this is Myrtle May, named after the sisters of her father. He's dead. Maybe that confused you. Where's Elwood? Oh, he couldn't make it this afternoon, Aunt Ethel. I'm sorry, but how about some tea? Elwood oh, isn't here? No. Oh, shame on him. That's the main reason I came. I want to see Elwood. Well, Aunt Ethel, there are many people who want to uh, talk to you. Do you realize, Nina, that I haven't seen Elwood <coughs> in years? Oh, how the time goes. But I don't understand it. I was talking to Mr. Chauvinet just the other night, and I said, what on earth do you suppose has happened to Elwood Dow? He never comes to the club dances anymore, and I haven't seen him in a horse show for years. Does Elwood see anybody these days, Vito? Oh, yes. Elwood sees somebody. Oh, yes. <laughs> Your Uncle Elwood Child is one of my favorite people. Always has been. I remember. Is Elwood happy, Vito? <clears throat> oh, Aunt Ethel, you don't have to worry about Elwood. He's very happy. Oh, look. Mrs. Frank Cummings just came in. Maybe you'd like to talk to her. Oh, she looks ghastly. How she's feeling, though. Well, if you think she looks bad, you ought to see him. Is that so? I must have them all. <laughs> she looks frightful. Oh, I thought she was dead. <laughs> no. What about that tea, Lita? Well, if you'll forgive me, I'll proceed you. I 
I, I put it up in your room. Thank you, Peter. That was very kind of you. And uh, I want you to be Harvey. As you can see, Harvey is a cool guy. Harvey, uh, you remember me speaking of Mrs. Chauvinet, but you can always call her Aunt Ethel. She's one of my oldest and dearest friends. <laughs> That's right. She's the one. <laughs> He says he would have recognized you anywhere. Oh, you ladies are lovely tonight. Come on, Harvey. We've got to go say hello to all of our friends. I beg your pardon, Adam. You're standing in his way. Wait, wait. You go right in, Harvey. I'll be there in just one minute. And Ethel, I can tell you're disturbed about Harvey. Please don't be. He stares like that at everyone. It's his way. Oh, but he liked you. Oh, I can tell he liked you very much. <laughs> Tea, perhaps. Oh, oh, not right now. I think I'd better be running along. Uh, <laughs>
and you wish to enter your brother here for treatment at the sanitarium. Uh, um, what is his age? What is his name? I'm so sorry. Uh, um, well, you know, life isn't easy for any of us these days, uh, but I just tell myself I have to hold up my head and go on, and that's what I tell Myrtle May, and that's what she tells me, uh, you know, Myrtle May. Uh, she's so broken up about her uncle Elwood. Elwood P. Dowd. Elwood. That's it. Elwood P. Dowd. And his age? 57 as of the 24th of April. Um, Elwood's a Taurus, you know, the bull, and I'm Leo, and Myrtle May is on the cusp. 57. Is he married? Oh, no. Elwood was never married. He stayed home with mother. He's such a good homeboy. He loves his home. Do you have him with you now, Mrs. Simmons? Yes, he's down in the cab. I gave the driver some money to watch him, but, you know, I didn't tell him why. You don't want to share that kind of thing with perfect strangers. Mr. Wilson, would you step down to the taxi in the driveway and ask Mr. Dowd if he would be good enough to step up to room 24 South Wing G? Ask him. This is his sister, Mrs. Simmons. How do? Why, certainly, uh... I'll be glad to escort him upstairs. Thank you. The rates here, Mrs. Simmons, you will find it printed on this card. Oh, no, 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 no. That'll be taken care of by my mother's estate, the late uh, Marcella Finney Dowd. Judge Gaffney is our attorney. All right. I will see if Dr. Sir Sanderson can see you now. Sanderson? But I want to see Charlie himself. But, Mrs. Simmons, it's Dr. Sanderson who sees everybody. Dr. Charlie sees no one. Well, isn't he still the head of this institution? Isn't he still a psychiatrist? Still a psychiatrist? Dr. Chamley is much more than that. He's a psychiatrist with a natural reputation. Whenever people have a mental breakdown, they at once think of Dr. Chamley. Well, I want to see him then. I, I don't want to be passed off to any second fiddle. Dr. Sanderson is nobody's second fiddle. He may not have been out of the medical school very long, but Dr. Chamley tried out as well and kept Dr. Sanderson. He's really wonderful. To the patients, I mean. <laughs> All right, then uh, let him know. I'll see him. Right away. Oh, Vida, isn't this wonderful? Mrs. Simmons? Oh! I didn't hear you come in. You, you startled me. You must be... Dr. Sanderson. Yes, won't you please be seated? Well, I hope you don't think I'm always this jumpy. Oh, of course not. Now, uh, this company tells me you're concerned about your brother, Dow. Is it Elwood P. Dow? Well, you know, Doctor, this isn't easy for me. Of course, no, of course, Mrs. Simmons, I understand. You know, it's just that Elwood is bringing this on himself, don't you realize? Myrtle May is young. She's got a right to a nice group of friends. She's got her whole life ahead of her. That's my daughter, Myrtle May. Your daughter? Yes. How long has it been since you've noticed peculiarities in your brother's behavior? Well, uh, I noticed it just as soon as Mother died and we came back from Des Moines to live with Elwood. You know, it's just that he... he I just, just that he... That he, 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 he what, Mrs. Simmons? Don't push it. Don't strain. Let it come. I'll wait for it. Doctor, everything I tell you is confidential, isn't it? Well, that's understood. Well, for one thing, he drinks. To excess? Excess. I mean, don't you call it excess when a man can't go a day without walking into one of those cheap taverns and hanging out with riffraff and then bringing them home and playing cards with them and giving them food and money and here I am trying to make a nice life for Myrtle May. I mean, if that is an excess, I don't know what excess is. I, I didn't doubt the statement, Mrs. Simmons. I merely asked if your brother drinks. Well, he does, definitely. And I want him locked up here permanently. Because I can't stand another day of that argument. We're going to set a place at the table for Harvey. We've got to move over on the couch and make room for Harvey and the phone ring. We have to answer it so Elwood can talk to Harvey. You know, uh, we never heard about Harvey before we came here, Doctor. Don't you think it would 
who'd been kind to her mother to have written and told us about Harvey before we came. I mean, honestly, Doctor, don't you? Well, I couldn't answer that question, Mrs. Simmons, because I don't. Well, I can, and it most certainly would have been. <coughs> um, this Harvey that you talk about, who is he? He's a rabbit. <laughs> Perhaps. But exactly who is he? Is he one of these companions of your brother that uh, he brings home that you don't approve of? Doctor! What? Don't you understand? Harvey is a big white rabbit. He's six feet tall. Or maybe six feet and a half. I mean, I should know. God knows he's been around the house long enough. Uh, Mrs. Simmons, let me understand this. You say... Doctor, do I have to keep repeating myself? My brother's closest friend is a big white rabbit. His name is Harvey. He lives in our house. You know, with everything together. Elma buys train tickets, theater tickets for the boat. You know, it's a tomorrow May. If your Uncle Elwood was so lonesome, he had to bring something home. Why couldn't that something have been yielded? I mean, he has me, though. He has Myrtle May. Mrs. Simmons. I Doctor, I'm going to tell you something that I've never told anyone before in my life. Sometimes I see that big rabbit myself. Oh, no. Isn't that terrible? I, I've never even to told that to Myrtle May. And what's more, He's every bit as big as Elwood says he is. Oh, God, I do not tell that to anybody. I'm ashamed of it. Oh, of course, Mrs. Simmons, of course. You're, you're tired. I am. Sure, sure. You've been worrying a great deal lately. Yes, I have. Sure, sure. Now, I'm going to help you. Oh, doctor. Just sit here quietly, Mrs. Simmons. I'll be right back. Mrs. Simmons? Wilson, sound the alarm. She mustn't get away. She ain't made with a getaway, huh? She's very, her condition is very serious. Go after her. I can't believe it. Main gate, Henry, Dr. Sanderson. Henry, don't let anybody leave the grounds. We're looking for a patient. I can't believe I had to leave her alone, but nobody answered the buzzer. Wilson was inside, Doctor. What do we have available, Miss Kelly? Um, number 13 of OSR is ready, Doctor. Okay, have her taken there immediately, and I'll come up and do a preliminary diagnosis. In the meantime, let's get her brother on the phone. Um, Dow, LVP Dow. Call him, please. But, Doctor, uh, I didn't know it was a woman who needed the treatment. She said it was for her brother. Well, of course she did. It's the oldest dodge in the book, used by any, any, any psychopath. She knew that he was coming out here to commit her, so she came out here to discredit him. Get him on the phone. But, but I, I thought the woman was all right, so I, I had Wilson taking the brother up to number 24 South Wing G. You had Wilson take the brother in? No gags, please, Kelly. Tell me you're not serious. But, but I did, Doctor. Sorry, I did. I feel terrible. I'm sorry. Yeah, that just fixes everything. Being sorry just takes care of it. I, I, I don't know. Miss Dunphy? Yes? Please unlock the door to room 24 and give Mr. Dowd his clothes and... And have him step down to my office right away. And ask him to step down to the office right away. There's been a terrible mistake and Dr. Sanderson wants to explain... Explain! Apologize! Oh, that's good. Thank you. Thank heaven they haven't put him in the hydrotop yet. Did you let him out? Oh, beautiful. And dumb, too. It's just too good to be true. But, Doctor, I'm sorry. I feel terrible. I didn't know. Just got me called and said, Mrs. Simmons and your brother will come down here. And then when she came, you don't have to be so sarcastic. Oh, don't I? Stop worrying. We'll get out of this somehow. 
Well, where are you going? I have to go tell the chief about this. He may want to handle it personally. No, 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 no. He will be furious. He will die, and then he will dominate me. The responsibility is all mine, Kelly. No, tell him it was all my fault. I never mentioned your name, oh, except in my sleep. <laughs> what about this, Mr. Dad? Just keep him here. I'll be right back. Hey, how about giving me a little hand? What? That's Simmons Day. Did you catch her? Slick as a whistle. She was walking down the lane, humming a little tune, and I jumped out behind her and I said, Sister, the man wants to see you. You should have heard her scream. She's wacky, all right? Okay, put her in number 13 Upper West R. She's up there now. She took her out the dive kitchen. Screaming and yelling. Hey, I'll hold her and you can come up and help me undress her. No, I will not. Dr. Sanderson told me to wait here until her brother comes down. Uh, maybe snappy, will ya? Mr. Dowd? Elwood P. I am Miss Kelly. Let me give you more of my heart. Now, if you should want to call me, you call me at this number. Don't call me at that one. That's the only one. Okay, thank you. Perfectly all right. If you should lose it, don't worry. I've got plenty more. Uh, won't you have a chair, please, Mr. Dab? Well, yes, thank you. I'll, I'll take two. Allow me. Matter of fact, so would I. 
when your sister's reaction to your drinking was way too intense, does your sister drink, Mr. Dow? No, Doctor, I don't think Vita's ever taken a drink. Well, I'm going to surprise her. I think she has, and does, constantly. I am certainly surprised. But her alcoholism isn't going to be the basis of my diagnosis. It's much more serious than that. She came out here speaking passionately about a six-foot giant white rabbit she called, um, Harvey. Yeah, that's what she called him, Harvey. Harvey is his name. She claims that you're persecuting her with this Harvey. Oh, no, I, I haven't been persecuting her with Harvey. Fida shouldn't feel that way. And, and now, Doctor, I must insist, before we go any further, that I... Let me make my point first. <laughs> Your sister's condition didn't happen overnight. It's a result of trauma. What? Trauma, spelled T. R A U M A. It means shock. To sum it up, I can't help her, but we'll have to commit her here temporarily. Well, I want Peter to have everything she needs, but exactly I don't know. because it stands to reason that nobody's ever seen a six-foot-tall white rabbit. Not very often, Doctor. <laughs> I like you, Deb. I like you too, Doctor. And Miss Kelly. So we will have her committed here temporarily. Under these conditions, I commit my own grandmother. Does your grandmother drink too? <laughs> no, that's just an expression. Now, if you'll sign these temporary commitment papers as next to the kin, it's just a formality. You better have me to do all that. She does the signing and the managing for the family. She's good at it. Well, we can't disturb her right now. Perhaps I better bring it up with Judge Gaffney. Well, maybe uh, you can tell him about it later. Uh, tell them that I advise them. In the meantime, it isn't as if you couldn't come out here any time you want and make inquiries. We'd be happy to have you. You could have a full, full visitor's pass. When would you like to come back? Um, Wednesday, say Friday? Well, this has all been so pleasant, I can come back right after dinner. About an hour. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be unusual, but I guess it would be all right. Well, you know, I don't have to go now. I'm not hungry. <laughs> well, um... Miss, Miss Kelly and I have to head on upstairs. We're really very busy. Uh, but I'll tell you what you might like. What might I like to do? We don't do this often, but just be sure in your mind that your sister's going to get good care here. Why don't you have a look around here? If you go out this doorway, down the hallway to the stairway, and make a right, you'll come to the occupational therapy room. And after that, will be the conservatory, the library, and the diet kitchen. For me to say, I better do that, doctor. Very well, then. Mr. Dowd, I'm so glad that we had this discussion. Here's your pass. I've enjoyed meeting you. Hey, Ms. Kelly. We seem to have enjoyed this so much. Let's keep right on. I'd like to invite the two of you to come down to Charlie's and have a drink with me. When I want people I like, I'd like to stay right with them. Well, uh, uh, we're on duty right now. Uh, Rain check, maybe some other time? When? Uh, our shift ends at 10 o'clock. Oh, good. Charlie's at 10 o'clock tonight. Well, uh... And you, Miss Kelly? Yeah, I, uh... I'll have a cab out here at 10 o'clock tonight, and the four of us will have a happy evening together. I want the two of you to become friends with a dear friend of mine. Well, you said later. <laughs> later it shall be. Goodbye for now. Whew. Now I can breathe again. Boy, that was a close shave, all right. But he seemed to be a pretty reasonable guy. You know, he's really very proud, and what he has to be proud of, I don't know. I played up to that flat. You can get to almost anybody that you want to. Now I've got to go check on that soon. Dr. Sanderson, when you say that you can get to anybody if you want to, how do you do that? Oh, lots of study, Kelly. Years of specialized training. But there's one thing I don't like about this Dow business. What's that? Well, that we had to make that date with him. You know, granted he's left here as a supporter and a backer of this institution, so I guess I'll have to go out. But you don't have to go. Oh! Well, it doesn't make any sense. I'll go, I'll have a drink with him, I'll pat him on the back and leave. Besides, I've got a date tonight. You have a date tonight? Well... 
I didn't want to go anywhere. The idea bored me stiff. I didn't want to go by no way anywhere again. I never want to go if my life was depending on it. What, what's the matter, Kelly? What are you getting so emotional about? You know, maybe he was a peculiar man with funny clothes, but his manner was perfect. He knows how to act. Well, I saw you giving him that doe-eyed stare. I didn't miss that. He wouldn't sit down until I sat down. He called, he told me I was lovely and he called me dear. I would go and have a drink with him if you weren't going. Of course you would. And look at him, he doesn't do anything. He hangs out in bars all day. He doesn't work. All that bowing and getting up and down every single time a woman makes a move. He's as outdated as a buggy whip. But you'd go to a bar with him and you'd let yourself be flattered by him. You're a wonderful woman, Kelly. Oh, well, listen here, Dr. Sanders. Dr. Sanders, Miss Kelly. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Tell the gardener to prune more carefully around my prize gardens on the fence by the road. They'll be ready for cutting next week. Yes, sir. The difficulty of the woman with the big rabbit, has it been smoothed over? We spoke to her brother and he seemed quite reasonable. Yes, well, I've had many patients out here who saw animals. I've never had a patient with an animal that long. Yes, doctor. She calls him Harvey. Harvey? Unusual name for an animal of any kind. Harvey is a man's name. So many of my day named Harvey, I've never heard of any animal whatsoever with that name. This case has an interesting phase, Doctor. Yes, Doctor. I will now go upstairs with you, look in on this patient. Maybe she can do with my Formula 977. I'll give you my advice in trying to describe the treatment. Doctor. Thank you, Doctor. And now, may I ask, what is that hat and coat doing on the table? Whose is it? I don't know, Doctor. Do you, Kelly? Was it Dad's? No, he has his hat on when he was in here. Maybe it belonged to one of the relatives in the patient. Give me the hat, there may be some kind of identification. What's this? There's two holes. Now, <laughs> this hat. See? Huh. That's strange. Uh, some new fad. Take it away, hang it up, get it out of here. There's a couple of things I get one. Dr. Chumley. Oh, there you are, Wills. How very little old thing. Fair, thank you, Wilson. Fair. Look, someone needs to help me with that Simmons game. Order a restraining jacket or something. She's terrible. You forgot about me, didn't you? I had to take off a girl all by myself. We're going up to see that patient now, Wilson. She's up there now, but in the hydro tub. Oh my god, I left the water running on her. Willie, remember your promise? No. Oh, hello, Dr. Sanderson. This is Willie, you haven't forgotten Dr. McClure's cocktail party. We promised them faithfully. Oh, that's right. I, look, I just have to dash up and see this I'll be down very shortly, darling. Give a little quick diagnosis, yes, yes, Willie. We don't yes, want to be late yes. to that party. Oh, I'm dying to see the inside of that house. Good evening. Good evening. I am Mrs. Chumley, Dr. Chumley's wife. Oh, I'm happy to know that. That is my name, Elwood P. Let me give you one of my cards. <laughs> now, if you should want to call me, you call me at this number. Don't call me at that one because that, that's the old one. Thank you. Um, is there something I can do for you? What did you have in mind? Well, you seem to be looking for someone. Oh, I am. I'm, I'm looking for Harvey. I went off without him. Harvey? Um, is he a patient here? No, 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 nothing like that. Oh, does he work here? Oh, no, you. He's what you might call my best friend, and he's a pooka. He came out here with me to meet this afternoon. Oh, well, where was he when you last saw him? Well, he was in that chair there with, with his hat and coat on the table. Well, there doesn't seem to be a hat and coat there now. Perhaps he left. Uh, apparently, because I can't find him anywhere. Well, what was that word you just used? Pooka. That's right. Is that something new? Oh, no, no, no. From what I understand, that's something very old. Oh, really? I never happened to hear it before. You know, I'm not surprised at that. I didn't either until I met him. 
I hope you have an opportunity to meet him, Mrs. Chumley. I'm sure he'd be quite taken with you. Oh, oh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, you. Not at all. When Harvey takes a liking to people, he expresses himself quite definitely. If he doesn't seem to care for people, he just he just sits there like an empty chair or an empty space on the floor. Harvey, he takes his time making up his mind about people. Choose it, you see. That's not such a bad way to be in this day and age. Now, Harvey is fond of my sister, Vida. But, but Vida doesn't seem to care for Harvey. Don't you think that's rather too bad, Mrs. Chung? Oh, I don't know, Mr. Dowd. I gave up a long time ago expecting my family to like my friends. It's useless. We must keep on trying. Yes, and we must. <laughs> Mrs. Chung? Yes? Did you know that Mrs. Magdalene's Aunt Rose is going to unexpectedly drop in on her tonight from Cleveland? No, I didn't. Well, neither does she. But I don't know anyone oh, named Mrs. Mrs. Magdalene. Lives next door to us. Oh, she's a wonderful woman. Harvey told me about her Aunt Rose. That's a very interesting little news item. You're perfectly free to pass that around. <laughs> Would you like to come downtown with me right now? I'd be glad to buy you a drink. Oh, well, uh, thank you very much, but no, I'm, I'm waiting for Dr. Chumley, and if he came down and found me gone, well, he'd be irritated. Oh, we wouldn't want that, would we? No, we wouldn't. But I'll tell you what I will do, however. What will you do, however? I'm interested. Well, if your friend should happen to come while I'm still here, I'd be happy to give him a message for you. Would you do that for me? I'd be very appreciative. Oh, no trouble at all. I'll write it on the back of this. What shall I tell your friend if he should happen to return? Oh, I'm still here. Ask him to meet me downtown if he has no other plans. Meet Mr. Dow downtown. Any particular place downtown? Oh, no, he'll know where. Harvey, he knows this town like a book. Harvey, you know where? Harvey what? Just Harvey. Oh, I'll tell you what. What? Doctor and I are going right downtown to 12th and Montview. Dr. McClure is having a cocktail party. A cocktail party at 12th and Montview? Yes, we're leaving there, driving there in just a few minutes. We can give your friend a lift to town. Well, I hate to impose on you, but I really appreciate that. Oh, no trouble at all. Dr. McClure is giving this party for his uh, sister from Wichita. I didn't know that Dr. McClure has a sister in Wichita. Oh, you know Dr. McClure. No. <laughs> <laughs> Are you sure you won't come downtown with me and have a drink? Oh, I really, really can. Thank you very much, and though. Some other time, yes, maybe. Yes, perhaps. Oh, it's been such a pleasure to meet you. I hope to see you again sometime. Yes, so do I. Thank you. You can't miss Harvey. Uh, he, he's he's very tall, like a, like that. Goodbye. Betsy Simmons' woman is uncooperative, Doctor. She refuses to admit she has this big white bird. Insists it's her brother. You've heard two of these at nine, another at ten, and she continues to be so aggressive. Another trip to the hydro bath at 8 in one of the morning at 7. And then we'll see if she won't cooperate. Won't be long time. Yes, Doctor. Good job. That's the way to contact you if you need me. Bring it back. Uh, yes, Willie. Oh, Willie, there was a man here. I mean, well, let me see. Here's his card. Dow. Elwood P. Dow. That's Mrs. Simmons' brother, Doctor. I told him to have a look around. I gave him full visiting privileges. She's not to see anyone tonight, not anyone at all. Tell him that. Yes, Doc. He didn't ask to see her. He was looking for someone, some friend of his. Who could that be, Doctor? I don't know, Doctor. He said it was someone he came out here with this afternoon. Was there someone here with Dad this afternoon, Miss Kelly? No, not when I saw him, Doctor. But he said there was. He said he last saw him sitting in that chair there with his hat and coat. He seemed quite disappointed. Dr. Sanderson. Oh, I said if we saw his friend, uh, we could give him a lift into town. He could ride in the back seat. Was that all right, Willie? Of course, oh, of course. Okay. Oh, 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 here it is. I wrote the friend's name on the back of this card. His name was Harvey. Harvey? Yeah, I, I didn't get his last name. Uh, he said something else about him. Uh, hookah. But I didn't quite get what that was. Harvey. He also said his friend was quite tall. Mm. Why are you looking like 
that, Willie. Uh, this man was very nice, a polite man, very kind. He merely asked that we give his friend a lift into town. And if we can't do a favor for someone, then why are we living? Where? Where did he go, Mrs. Jumley? How long ago was he here? I don't know where he went. It was just a second ago. Get me that hat. By George, I'll get one of this. Main gate, Henry Dr. Sanderson. Yeah, it's probably through the judge Gaffney. Henry, did a man in a brown suit walk out the main gate a minute ago? He did? He's gone? Man, judge Gaffney, yeah, it's Dr. William and Charlie here, the psychiatrist. Yeah. Oh, just a routine check on the spelling of the name for our record, yes. Yeah. He called here early this afternoon about having one of your clients admitted, yes. Yeah. How does that name spell? With a W, not a U. Elwood P. Dow. Judge? Dr. Sanders. I believe your name is Sanders. Yes, doctor. Went to medical school. You specialized in the study of psychiatry. Graduated, he went for. Perhaps they neglected to tell you that a rabbit has two large pointed ears. That a hat for a rabbit would have to be perforated to make room for those ears. Doc, that would seem perfectly reasonable this afternoon, Doctor. Doctor, the function of a psychiatrist is to tell the difference between those who are reasonable and those who merely talk and act reasonably. Do you realize what you have done to me? Uh, Over the universe, I tell you. You have permitted a psychopathic case to leave these grounds and walk around with an overgrown white rabbit. You have subjected me, a psychiatrist, to the humiliation of having to call, of all things, a lawyer to find out who came out here to be committed and who came out here to commit. Dr. Chomley, I just want you. Mr. Miller Wilson, I want you. Now, I'm going to have to do something I haven't done in 15 years. I'm going to have to go out and find this patient, Elwood P. Dowd. I'm going to have to bring him back. And when I do bring him back, your connection with this institution has ended. As of that moment. Wilson, get the car. Pat, call them the clues. Tell them we can't make the dinner. Miss Kelly, come with me. We'll get this woman out of the tub. Oh, I'll have to tell the cook we'll be home for dinner. She'll be furious. Wilson. Yes, ma'am. What's a puka? A what? A puka. Well, you can search me. I, I wonder if it's in that dictionary there. They've got everything in there. Let's, let's take a look. Puka. P O. Probably two O's. P O O K O. I can't take the time to do this now. If Dr. Chumley comes down and finds me still here, oh, he'll be furious. Oh dear. Oh dear. P O O K A. Puka of Celtic mythology, a fairy spirit in animal form, always very large. A puka appears here and there, now and then, to this one and to that one. A wise and mischievous creature, very fond of rum pot, crack pot, and how are you, Mr. Wilson? How are you, Mr. Wilson? Who in the dictionary wants to know? I hell with it. Your mother, where 
Florence, we know Louise. What took Gabby? You know where she is. She took up a little off the sanitarium. Well, then why did she call me at the club with a bunch of hysteria? Talking, I don't know what she was talking about. Working up something fierce. Mother, carry on. What we'll yeah. out? I don't know. She was a scare. That's strange. She took up a little bit out to the sanitarium. All she had to do was put him in. Did you find it? I'll be right with you. They found it. Who? What? I don't understand. When Mother left the house with Uncle Elwood, I went to the real estate office to put the house on the market. What do you think I found there? I'm not a quiz kid. I found a man who was looking for an old house just like this one to cut up into buffet apartments. He's going through it now. Well, my diary, mind you, Myrtle May, this is not your house. No, this house belongs to your Uncle Elwood. But now that Uncle Elwood is locked up, Mother controls the property, doesn't she? Where is your mother? Where is Vito Louise? Judge, if she took Uncle Elwood out to Chumley's rest to tell them about Harvey and put him in. Well, then why did she call me at the club in the middle of the game, telling me to meet her here about something urgent? Judge, I don't know. I simply don't know. Have you got the deed to this house? Sure. It's in my safe in the office. Tell you, Myrtle May, I feel pretty bad about this locking up Elwood. Mother and I will be able to take a long trip now, out to Pasadena. Always like that, boy. He could have been anything, done anything. He could have been a valued member of this community. All he did was get a big breakfast. And people liked him. Everybody liked him. Women liked him. Men liked him. I even liked him. Are you telling me that Uncle Elwood was once like other men? That Women actually liked him, I mean, in that way. Well, not since he started seeing the giant rabbit, but before <laughs> then, I tell you, that, that mailbox in front of your grandmother's house was full of little blue scented envelopes for Elwood. I can't believe it. Yeah. Of course, there was always something different about the boy. Oh, I don't doubt that. Yeah, he was always, he always took everything, any sudden change in plans so calmly. I used to admire him, but now I realize, well, I should have been suspicious. I mean, a normal man, when he looks up and sees a giant rabbit, he'd do something about it. Not Elwood. Oh, he took that calmly, too, and look where it got him. Oh, I've had that rabbit in my office many a time. I might be old, but I don't miss much. <laughs> What's that? The prospective buyer on the third floor. Mother, what the challenge? Vito <laughs> Lee, what's the matter, girl? I never thought I'd see either of you again. Take hold of her, Judge. All right, all right, all right. Easy, easy, easy. Steady, girl. Steady. Steady. Here, wait. Steady. No, baby. And 
Okay, go on, Vita Louise. What happened? Oh, he ripped off my clothes. Oh, did you hear that, Judge? Go on, Mother. <laughs> my God. And then he dropped me down in the tub of water. Yeah. 
about me? The reason I'm here is John Moy. Did Dr. Chumley like to know who's talking? Did Dr. Chumley, oh. this is George Daffy. Chumley, Chumley, Chumley. Let's talk. Good evening, George. Let's not waste time. Has he been here? No one? No, but see here, Doctor. Sure, he ain't. He's hiding. He's wise now. It's going to be an awful job trying to smoke him out. It'll be more difficult now. Yes, lad. They're coming. But I get them. I always get them. You've got that list of places we've been to, Wilson? Oh, yeah, sure. Read it. We've been to 17 bars. <laughs> Eddie's place, Charlie's place, Betty's bar dance, the 4th Avenue Firehouse, 10th, 12th, 9th Avenue Firehouses, just to make sure. The Union Station and down the drain elevator. See, why does this guy go down the drain elevator? Foreman is a friend of his. He's got a lot of friends in a lot of places. The reason I've stopped by here is to ask Mrs. Simmons if she has any other suggestions as to where we might go. Well, I think this would be a good time for me to inform you, Doctor, that Mrs. Simmons has retained me to sue you! What? For what happened this afternoon in your sanitarium! A suit? Yes, and furthermore! That's pretty, ain't it? After this, chasing your tail all over town looking for that guy. Uh, what happened this afternoon was an unfortunate mistake. I've discharged my assistant who made it, and now I... I'm willing to not take charge of this man's case personally. It's interesting. And my interest in the case is something that no man can know anything about. You can ask him. But this business this afternoon... Water under the dam. That's how I see this. See, I see it this way. The important item now is to go out and get this man, take him to the sanitary and pay it off. That's right, Judge. This is what I think. Oh, allow me to introduce. This is Myrtle May Simmons, the daughter of Vita Louise and uh, <laughs> the niece of Elwood Vidal. How do you do, Miss Simmons? How do you do, Dr. Why, hello, Myrtle. What do you say? Let me see Mrs. Simmons. Oh. oh, she won't come down, Doctor. I know she won't. Can you try and get her to talk to him, Judge? No, 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 no. What happened this afternoon out there? Well, I don't know what happened, but she was manhandled. The approach was not professional, it was personal. This is a serious charge, Wilson. Doctor, <laughs> I have been with you for ten years, and you're willing to take the word of... What's your name again? Judge Omar Gaffney. The word of this old blister, Wilson. Judge Gaffney. <laughs> Me, and a dame that sees a rabbit. It is not Mrs. Simmons who sees the rabbit. It's Elwood. That's right, it's Uncle Elwood. Doctor, what do you say you and I go talk about this private? Very well, Judge. I have a situation here, Wilson. Pray for me. So, your name's Myrtle, huh? Oh, uh, yes. If we grab your uncle, you're liable to come down to the sanitarium on visiting days. Oh, I really don't know. And if you do, I'll be there. You will. And if you don't see me, stick around, kid. Don't get up. I'll show up. You will. Well, you heard the doctor tell you to tell me to wait? Yeah. How about while we wait a nice cup of coffee and some sandwiches? Certainly. I'll proceed you into the kitchen. Up. Yes, sir. You've got something, Myrtle. What? The doctor noticed it right away. He don't miss a trick. What? You not only got a nice bill, kid, you've got something else too. What? You've got the screwiest uncle that ever showed his face in our
Uh, tell me, Mrs. Chubby, were you able to locate Harvey? Oh, then, then that's all right. I'll, I'll find him. I am so sorry I missed you at the McClure's cocktail party. Well, the people there were so charming, I was able to leave quite a few of my cards. I, I waited there until you called to say you couldn't make it because a patient had escaped. Oh, my. Where am I? Well, I'm here. Uh, but I've got to go now. I've got to find Harvey. Uh, goodbye, my dear. Well, best regards to you and, and to anyone you might run into tonight. Uh, It 
won't work. He wants us to put Harvey on the line. <laughs> Say, Harvey is here, but can't come to the telephone. Why not? Say he's... Say he's in the bathtub. In the bathtub? Say he's in the bathtub. Send him over there. That way we'll find out where he is. Oh, doctor! You must do it, Mrs. You must do it. Yes, dear. Uh, Harvey is here, but he, he can't come to the phone. You know, he's in the bathtub. And I'll send him over as soon as he's dry. What? What? No! What? No! What the hell? He said Harvey just walked in there, and we should look up in the bathtub because it must be a straight. <laughs> but I know where he is. He's at Charlie's Tavern on 12th of May. 12th of May, that's two blocks down, one block over, isn't it? Dead. No. Where are you going? No, Why don't you stay with me? No, I'm going out to get your brother and no. take him out to the sanitarium where he belongs, Mrs. Simmons. No, Doctor, send an assistant. I'm warning you. If I'm to save your brother... Save him? He can't be saved. He needs to be locked up, put away, and left. You consider your brother a dangerous man? Dangerous? Why? Well, I don't want to tell you. But if I didn't think he was dangerous, why would I want to lock up their permanent? Well, I must observe this man. I must look at the expression on his face as he talks to this rabbit. He does talk to this rabbit, you say? They tell each other everything. <laughs> What's that? He talks to the rabbit. Yes. Well, I must go and get him. Don't go, really. Really, uh, you'll regret it. Nonsense. You underestimate me, Mrs. Simmons. No, no, you underestimate my brother. Not at all. Don't worry about me. I can handle him. <laughs> you can handle it. Colonel May, will you check and see who's up in the bathtub? <laughs> oh! oh! Well, she was beautiful, though. Who? That girl you were with. 
I thought you didn't know us. You bump into us twice. How could I help it? Well, not that it makes any difference to you, but that woman happens to be a charming lady. She has a sweet disposition, and she knows how to conduct herself. Funny, she couldn't write a better day for a Saturday night. And she has an excellent mind. Why doesn't she use it? You know, I, I can't blame you for having that hard shell exterior. You're obviously compensating for something. No, I'm not. And don't you use any of your psychiatry on me, Doctor. Oh, I'd like to use something on you just once. Just to see if you would melt under any circumstances, but I doubt it. Well, you will never know, Doctor. Because my interest in you is as a, uh, as a case study, that's all. I want to know where you get that inflated ego. Ain't you the meanest person? Inflated ego? Care history? Oh! Don't walk away, let's finish Leave this. me alone! Oh, gladly. Somebody's rest. Yes, yes, Sergeant. No accident report on him either in town or the suburb. Thank you. Maybe we. Oh, never mind. They're here now. Mr. Dowd. Good evening, my dear. These are for you. For me? Oh, thank you. Oh, they're quite fresh, too. I, I just picked them outside. <laughs> <laughs> I hope Dr. Tumble didn't see you. D these are his prize failures. Where is he? Did he go upstairs? Not knowing, I, I cannot state. Where's Dr. Sanderson? In his office, I guess. Oh, thank you. There you are, Dad. Oh, Doctor, I've got a taxi outside. You and Miss Kelly can get away now. Where is Dr. Chumley? Oh, is he coming with us? Oh, that's nice. Well, I don't know, Doctor. Wait a minute, Dad. The situation has changed since we spoke this afternoon. I want you to hold no resentments. Dr. Chumley is your friend and he wants to help you. That's very kind of him. I'd like to help him, too. Well, the best way is to have a cooperative attitude. That's half the battle. We always face reality now, sooner or later. Oh, Doctor, I've been wrestling with reality for 50 years, and I'm happy to state that I finally won out over it. Now, <laughs> won't you and Miss Kelly come down to Charlie's with me? Here you are. Upstairs, buddy. We're going upstairs. Is the doctor okay? There must be some mistake. Dr. Sanderson and Miss Kelly and I are going down for a drink. Be glad to have you come with us, Mr. Uh, Wilson. Wilson. They have a wonderful floor show. Yeah? We have a wonderful floor show as well. Up there, too. Wait a minute, Wilson. Where did you say Dr. Chumley went down? Well, as I said, he did not confide his plans in me. You mean the doctor ain't showed up yet? Not yet. Where is he? Well, that's what we're trying to find out. Mrs. Dowd walked in here by himself. Yeah? Listen, you better talk fast or I'm walking you over. Well, I'd rather you not do that. And I'd rather you not mention such a thing in the presence of a lovely young lady like me. Mr. Dow, Dr. Charlie went into town to pick you up. That was four hours ago. Where has the evening gone to? Oh, uh, listen to that. Smartly. Where did you see Dr. Charlie tonight, Dow? Well, he came into Charlie's at around dinner time. It's a cozy spot. Let's all go down there. We can talk this over with a tall one. Wait a minute. We're not going anywhere. I'm asking you a question, and you, if you don't button up your lip and give me some straight answers, I'm going to beat it out of you. What you suggest is impossible. What's that? Well, you ask me to button my lip and give you straight answers. That can't be done. <laughs> Let me handle this, Wilson. All right, handle it then, but find out where the doctor is. Did, did Dr. Charlie did go to Charlie's place, you say? Yes, I saw him. Uh, he had asked for me, and naturally the proprietor brought him over. Go we on. exchanged the conventional greetings. I said, how do you do, Dr. Chumley? He said, how do you do, Mr. Dow? I, I think we said that at least once. Okay, okay. I'm just trying to be factual. Then I introduced him to Harvey. To who? A white rabbit six feet tall. Six feet? Oh, six feet three and a half. Okay, fool around with this guy, and all this time the doctor's lying in a ditch, bleeding. If those were his plans for the evening, he did not tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Go on now. Well, Dr. Chumley came over to Booth to sit with us. Now, I was seated on the outside like this, and Harvey, he sleeped on the inside near the wall. Dr. Chumley sat directly across from him where he could look at him. That's right. Spent the whole night talking about seating arrangements. Well, Harvey suggested that I buy him a drink. Now, 
knowing that Harvey does not like to drink alone, I suggested to Dr. Chumley that we join him. Then? We join him. Go on. We join him again. <laughs> then what? We kept on joining him. Oh, skip <laughs> with all this joining, will ya? For asking me to skip a large portion of the evening. Tell us what happened to the doctor. Come on, please. Well, Dr. Chumley and Harvey got into a conversation. Quietly at first. And then it became rather heated. Dr. Chumley, he raised his voice. Yeah? Why? Well, Harvey suggested that Dr. Chumley assume some part of the financial responsibility for all the joining. Uh, Dr. Chumley didn't want to do that. <coughs> well, we can believe that, Harvey. <laughs> <laughs> Let him talk, all right? This guy's got guts. Well, I agree to take on the whole thing. I didn't want any trouble. We go down and Charlie up Harvey and I quite often, and the proprietor, he's a fine man with a, a very interesting approach to life. Then the other matter came up. Cut the damn double talk, will you, and just get on with it. Mr. Wilson, you are a sincere type of person, but I must ask you not to use that language in the presence of Miss Kelly. You're, you're right, Dad, and we're sorry. Now, you say that the other matter came up? Well, there was this beautiful blonde woman, uh, Mrs. Smethills and her escort, seated in the booth across from ours. Dr. Chung, he got up, he went over, he sat next to her, explaining that they had met once in Chicago. Well, her escort escorted Dr. Chumley back to Harvey and me, tried to point out it'd be better if Dr. Chumley would mind his own affairs. Does he have any? <laughs> does he have any what? Does he have any affairs? How will I know? Mr. Dow, please hurry. We are all so worried. Well, Dr. Chumley then urged Harvey to go with him down to Blondie's Chicken Inn. <laughs> he wanted to go to Eddie's instead. So while they were arguing, I went to the bar to order another drink. When I came back, they were gone. Where did you go? Where did the doctor go? I don't know. I had a date out here with Dr. Sanderson and Miss Kelly. I came out to pick them up, hoping later we'd run into Harvey and Dr. Chumley, they could party. You satisfied? You got a story? You're lying and we know it. I never lie, Mr. Wilson. You've done something to the doctor, and I'm finding out what you did. Don't touch it, Wilson. Maybe he's not lying, Wilson. Oh, uh, that's all this guy is, a bunch of lies. You don't believe the doctor's sitting there talking to a big white rabbit, do you? But maybe Dr. Chumley did go to Charlie's place. And so why rabbit, I suppose. Why not? Harvey was there. You know, Dr. Chumley, he seemed a little frightened at first, but... That gave way to admiration as the evening wore on. <laughs> the evening wore on. Oh, that's a nice expression. With your permission, I'd like to say it again. The evening wore on. <laughs> With your permission, I'd like to knock your teeth down your throat. Why, Mr. Wilson, having you some old friends you can go and play with. <laughs> no, of this guy, you couldn't show up here in an ordinary case of DT. And you show up here with a big white rabbit. Stimulating as all this is, I'd like to go downtown. Yes, Charlie's place? Is Dr. Chumley down there? Yes, he was there early on in the evening with Mr. Dowd. What? Well, don't bite my head off. Ooh. My, that man was mad. He said Mr. Dowd was welcome there any time, but his friend was not. That's Mr. McNulty, the bartender. He's very fond of me. Now, let's all go down there. Let's have a drink. Wait a minute. Sit down. Sit down. Yes, my dear. May I hold your hand? Yes. Oh, Mr. Dow, Mrs. Chumley is so worried something might have happened to the doctor. Won't you please try and remember anything, anything at all? For you, I, I would do anything. I'd almost live my life over again. Almost. But I, I told it all. Are you sure? Quite sure. But ask me again. I really like that warm tone you had in your voice just then. So did I. Oh, nuts. What? <laughs> nuts. Uh, I've got to go. I've, I've got to be probably downtown. I've got things to do. What is it that you do, Mr. Dowd? Well, Harvey and I, we, we sit in the bars. We have a drink or two. Play the jukebox. 
you know, soon the faces of other people turn toward mine and, and smile. They're saying, we don't know your name, mister, but you're a swell fellow. Well, Harvey and I, we warm ourselves in these golden moments. We enter as strangers, now we've got friends. They come over, they talk to us, they drink with us. They tell us about the big, terrible things they've done, about the big, wonderful things they will do, their hopes, their regrets, their loves, their hates, all very big, because nobody ever brings anything small into a bar. Then I introduce them to Harvey. He is bigger and grander than anything they've offered me. When they leave, they leave impressed. Now the same people seldom come back, but that's envy, my dear. There's a little bit of envy even in the best of us. That's too bad, isn't it? How did you come to call him Harvey? Well, Harvey is his name. Well, how do you know that? Oh, now that's an interesting place in his doctor. Several years ago, I was walking down Fairfax Street between 18th and 19th. You, you know that block? Uh, yes, yes. I had just put Ed Hickey into a taxi. Now, Ed, he'd been mixing his gin and his rye. I, I felt he needed a little convey. So as I was walking down the street, I heard this voice saying, Good evening, Mr. Dow. Well, I turned around, and there was this great white rabbit leaning against the lamppost. Well, I thought nothing of that. <laughs> well, when you've lived in a town as long as I have, lived in this one, you get used to the fact that everybody knows your name. <laughs> so naturally, I went over to chat with him, and he said, Hey, Vicky's looking a little stiff tonight, or might not be mistaken. <laughs> no, he wasn't mistaken. I think the world would end all, but <laughs> he was stiff. So we got talking, and finally I said to him, you've got the advantage on me. You know my name. I don't know yours. Right back at me, he said, what name do you like? Mm -hmm. I didn't have to think about that for a minute. Harvey has always been my favorite name. So I said, Harvey. And he said, this is an interesting part of the whole thing. He said, what a coincidence. My name happens to be Harvey. <laughs> what was your father's name, Dad? John. John Frederick. Dad, when you were a child, did you have a friend of whom you were very fond that you spent many carefree hours with? Yes, yes, Doctor. Didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> what was his name? Vern. Vern McElhenney. Did you know the McElhenney's doctor? No. Oh, it's too bad. There were a lot of them, and oh, they circulated them. Wonderful people. Think back, Dow. Wasn't there someone, somewhere, sometime, whom you knew by the name of Harvey? Didn't you know anybody by that name? No, Doctor. No one. Maybe that's why I always had such high hopes for it. Come on, Wilson. We can take Mr. Dow upstairs now. I'm not going anywhere. You made this your show, you run with it. And letting him sit here forgetting about the doctor. It's your show, you run with it. Come on, Dad. Come on, Owen. Very well, Lyman. But I can only visit a short time. I promised Harvey I'd take him to the floor show. Oh, boy. Dr. Chumley, are you all right? Of course I'm all right. Yes, I'm being followed. Lock the door. Who's following you? None of your business. Get 
Dumping on the third. Dumping. Can you give down his clothes and send him down here? Leave me, Wilson. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Don't leave me. Look. Hang. It's got cat. Chumley, we gotta talk. This is serious. More serious than you think. Where can we talk? Not in there. The doctor does not like anyone going in there. No, sir. All right, then. Sit down. Tell me, sit down, Myrtle May. Sit down, Dr. Tell me, sit down, Myrtle May. Oh, please. Now, these are my notes. The facts in this case. Can anybody hear me? Yeah, we can all hear you. Is that all right? Well, uh. Has it ever occurred to you, Doctor, that there might be something to this giant rabbit army? Of course there is. And anyone who thinks so is crazy. Well, don't look at me like that. There's something funny about me. I'm like my father's family. They're all dead. <laughs> well, here, uh, the plaintiff in this case, Miss Beetle Louise Simmons, swears under oath that on the morning of March 2nd, while standing in her kitchen, in her home, she heard her name called, turned around, saw the giant rabbit Harvey staring at her. Yeah, he was staring at her, and uh, of course, miffed and offended, she drove the creature from her home, and he left. What did she say? That's not important. What is important is, I want to know what she said to drive that creature from another cemetery. Hello. I hate to have you tell him, Judge. It's not a bit like Mother. Oh, quit stalling and get on with it. All right. She looked him right in the eye and with great vehemence she said, To hell with you! To hell with you! <laughs> yeah. He did, but that doesn't matter either. What, what I want to know is, is this perjury or something we can handle? Oh, uh, um... <clears throat> Ruthie, I've been looking all over for you. Dr. Sanderson, disregard everything I said this afternoon. I want you back on my staff. Oh, you're a very astute young man. Oh, did you hear that? Yeah, baby. Yeah. You've just got to keep up all what I'm here, Doctor. Oh, no. I want my cemetery the way it was before that. Well, I know what you mean. You do? Well, it certainly gets on anyone's nerves the way that Uncle Elwood knows what's going to happen before it happens. This morning, for instance. He told us, and Harvey told him, that Mrs. McElhinney's Aunt Rose would be dropping in on her unexpectedly tonight from Cleveland. And did she? Did she what? I don't know. Did she come? This is how they said she would. Oh, yes. These things always turn out the way Uncle Elwood says they will. But what of it? What do we care about the McElhinney's? You're saying this happens often? Yes, and isn't it silly? Harvey, Uncle Elwood says, Harvey tells him everything. Harvey knows everything. But how could he when he's most as as Harvey? Fly specs. I spent my life on fly specs while miracles are leaning on lampposts on 18th and Fairfax. <laughs> oh, good. Nobody here but humans. <laughs> oh, Mother, you promised you wouldn't come out here. Well, I brought your Uncle Elwood's bathrobe. What are you all doing just sitting around? I thought you'd be busy committing him. Sit over there, dear. I will not sit over there. <laughs> Is everything settled? Yes, it will be. Doctor, may I give an opinion? Yes, do, by all means. Omar! An opinion from him? That's the one with that. <laughs> Doctor, it's my opinion that Mr. Elwin P. Dow is suffering from third-degree hallucinations. And uh, the uh, other party from auto suggestion. It's my suggestion that we give Mr. Dowd shock formula 977 and bed rest at home for. Uh, uh, mm. After yes. receiving this treatment, Mr. Dowd will no longer see the rabbit. It has been used in hundreds of psychopathic cases. Don't you call my brother a psychopathic case? We've never had anything like that in our family. If you didn't think Uncle Elwood was psychopathic, then why did you bring him out here? Well, what else was I going to do with him? I couldn't put him in jail. I mean, this isn't Uncle Elwood's fault. Why did Harvey ever have to talk to Elwood? You know, with a whole town full of 
people. Why do you have to bother Elvis? Stop putting your oar in, Vita. Keep your oar out. And if this doctor thinks this formula can help bring Elway back to reality, that's where we want him. Give it to him. I'm not sure to work in a case like this, Doctor. Uh, it always has, Doctor. Well, you know, Harvey always follows Elwood home. Yeah. Yes, and so if you give him the formula, and then Harvey comes to the door, then Elwood won't see him, and he won't let him in. And then I can go to the door, and I can do it. Mother, won't you stop talking about Harvey as if there was such a thing? You know, you've got a lot to learn, and I hope you never learn it. Oh, good evening, everyone. Oh, good evening, dear. I brought your bathrobe. Oh, thank you, Vita. What is your decision, Doctor? Yeah, yes. uh, we've got to come. You've got to come to decide the job. I'm going to do something. Yes, Aunt Perry. Yeah. While you're all yeah. making up your minds, yeah. let's go back to Charlie's have a drink. No, oh, Elwood, no, dear. You you can't go anywhere. You stay here. Yes, Uncle Elwood. Well, you want me to stay? I want to go. An element of conflict in any discussion, that's a good thing. It means that everybody's keeping part, nobody's left out. I like that. Oh, Doctor, how do you and Harvey get along? What is your answer, Doctor? What? Doctor, what is your opinion? Oh, I must be alone to speak alone with this man. Go step into the other room, please. I'll be my time. This is short. Thank you. Well, do hurry, Doctor. Yes, I will. And Elwood, dear, you, you stay here. Mr. Doctor, let me give you this chair. Anything else I can get for you? What did you have in mind? Well, Mr. Doctor, what sort of man are you? Where did you come from? Didn't I give you one of my cards? And where on the face of this tile of earth did you find a thing like it? Harvey the Booker. <laughs> is it true that he has a function that he gets advance notice? I'm happy to say it is. Harvey is versatile. Harvey can stop clocks. What? Well, you've heard the expression, his face could stop a clock? Yes. Why? Well, Harvey says he could look at your clock and stop it. And you can go away anywhere you like, with whomever you like, for as long as you like. And when you come back, not one minute will have ticked by. You mean that he... Einstein overcame time and space, but Harvey, he not only overcame time and space, but any objections. Uh, and does he do this for you? Well, he's willing to at any time, but I could never think of any place I'd rather be. I'm having a wonderful time, wherever I am, whomever I'm with. I'm having a fine time with you right now, Dr. I know where I go. Where? I go to Akron. Akron, Ohio? <laughs> There's this cottage camp outside of Akron, you know, grove of maple trees. Oh. Cool, green, beautiful. My favorite tree. I'd go there with a pretty young woman. A strange woman. A quiet, under a tree. I wouldn't even want to know her name. I'd just be. Mr. Brown, why wouldn't you want to know her name? You might be acquainted with the same people. <laughs> I'd send out for cold beer. Send out the cold beer and I, I, I talk to her. I tell her things I've never told anyone. Things that are locked in here. Then I'd send out for more cold beer. No whiskey. Beer's better. Well, maybe under a tree, but she might like a whiskey highball. I wouldn't let her talk to me. But as I talked, I'd, I'd want her to reach out and soft my hand. Gently stroke my hair and say, Oh, you poor thing. You poor, poor thing. Well, how long would you let that go on for? <laughs> Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're making a mistake and not letting that woman talk. I know you're making a mistake with all that beer and no whiskey. Uh, I like it. You're two weeks. Cold beer at Akron and one last fling. Oh, God, man. Tell me 
morning, Mr. Dowd. Could he... Would he do this for me? Well, he could. He might. I've never heard Harvey say anything against Akron or Ohio. By the way, Doctor, where is Harvey? You don't know. The last time I saw him, he, he was with you. Uh, uh, he must be down at Charlie's waiting for me right now. That's it. He'd be down at Charlie's. All right. Excuse me, Doctor. I'd better say goodbye to Dr. Sanderson and all of my friends. Oh, Mr. Dowd, they're not your friends. I'm your friend. Oh, thank you, Doctor. I'm yours. And this sister of yours, she's at the bottom of the conspiracy to lock you up. She had your commitment papers drawn up today. She has your power of attorney. She has your, your safety deposit box key. She brought you out here. She did all of that in one afternoon. Yeah. Oh, Vita is such a whirlwind. <laughs> God, man, don't you have any righteous indignation? Oh, doctor. <laughs> My mother used to tell me, in this world, Elwood, she always called me Elwood. In this world, Elwood, you must be oh so smart or oh so pleasant. For a long time, I, I was smart. I recommend pleasant. You can quote me on that. Still, I will protect you if I have to lock her up. Would you like me to do that for you? No, doctor, not unless Vita wanted it that way. Not that you don't have a nice place here at all, but I think Vita would be much happier at home with Harvey and me and Myrtle May. <coughs> Miss Kelly, diviner grace has never brightened this enchanting face. Ah, it's fifth elegy. Oh, Miss Kelly, you will never look lovelier. Oh. I will never feel happier, Mr. Dow. I know it. Well, this rabbit gag's a good one. Nurse Kelly's never kissed me. Um, it has always been my favorite poet. Okay, Doctor. Oh, okay, uh, you're discharged now. Come well, on. sir, take your hands on Mr. Dow. What? Apologize to Mr. Dow. Apologize to the guy with the rabbit. Apologize. Apologize. I apologize. The door's this way. If I leave, I'll know where to go. Tell me, Mr. Dowd, do women often go up and kiss you the way Miss Kelly did just now? Not once in a while. But I encourage it too. <sighs> to hell with decency. I have to have that right. Oh, Dr. Sanders, I was. One minute, Dad. Doctor, do you agree with my diagnosis? Yes, please, bring it over. Judge Gaffney, Mr. Simmons, come back in, please. I find that I concur with Dr. Sanders. Thank you, Doctor. Isn't that wonderful? What a relief. Good boy! Well, let's celebrate! I've got some new bars listed in the back of this book. Oh, this injection carries a violent reaction. I can't do it without his consent. Will he give it? Well, he will if I ask him. To give up this rat, I doubt it. Don't ask, just give it to him. Sun's down, bottom's up, off the road, on the rocks, Henry's Hawaiian hut, Benny's drive-in. Oh, we'll go to Benny's drive-in. We better call ahead for a table. How many of us will there be, Vita? Oh, Elwood. Mr. Dowd, I have a formula, 977, that'll do you good. We can take it. You won't see the rabbit anymore. But you will see your responsibilities and your duties. Well, if you thought of it, Doctor, I'm sure it's a fine thing. And if I happen to run into somebody who needs it, be happy to recommend it. And as for myself, no, I, I wouldn't care for it. Hear that, Judge! Hear that, Doctor! That's what we have to put up with. do you want me to take this? Oh, Elwood, dear, I'm only thinking of you. You know, you're my brother, and I've known you for years. I'd do anything for you, but that Har, that, that Harvey, he won't do anything for you, dear. He's just making a fool out of you. Don't be a fool, Elwood. I won't. I mean, you could make something of yourself. You could go down to wet the Western Slope water board and be sitting on the board right now if you just ask. All right, Tina. Harvey and I will go down there. We'll ask him tomorrow. Tomorrow! Oh, God, I hope I never live to see another time.
tomorrow. Maybe not as murder may have to go on living in that house with that rabbit. We have no friends who will come over. We have no social life. We have no life at all. We're both miserable. I wish I was dead. And you don't even care, do you? I've always wanted Vita to have everything she wants. Are you sure, Vita? Yes. All right, Doctor. Well, where do I go? Go to Sarah's office. You say goodbye to the old boy for me, won't you? How long is this going to take? It'll just be a few minutes. Why don't you wait here? We'll wait. Dr. Sanderson said it would just be a minute. No, Mother, don't fidget. Well, how can I help it? Excuse me. What do you want? I'm looking for a lady with her. Oh, there you are. Lady, you jumped out of my cab without paying me. Oh, I'm sorry. How much is it? it is it? All the way out here to town, 875. Oh, okay. Um. Sit back and enjoy the ride. 
They, they talk to me. Sometimes we stop and watch the sunset, look at the birds fly. Sometimes we stop and look at the birds fly when there ain't no birds. <laughs> watch the sunset when it's raining. But I always get a big tip. But on the way back, afterwards, uh-oh. Afterwards, uh-oh. What do you mean, afterwards, uh-oh? They crap, crap, crap. They yell at me, watch the brakes, watch the lights, watch the intersections. They scream at me in a hurry. They got no faith in me or my cab. Yet, it's the same cab, the same driver, going back over the same road. There's no fun and no tips. Oh, but my brother would tip you anyway. He's very generous. He always has been. Now, after this here, you won't be late. After this, he'll be a perfectly normal human being. You know what bastards they are. I'm glad I met you. I'll wait. Oh, Judge Myrtle May! We have to stop it! Hell, would you come out of there? I don't want Ella to be like that. I don't. I don't want to be taken. I don't like people like that. You can't do that. Giving me injection. No, that's office. Shut up. I live longer than you, and I remember my father. I remember your father. I want What's all this? What's the commotion? He wants to stop the injection. Is this woman sounding off again? You haven't given it to him yet, have you? No. Well, Ricky, please. Well, Wilson, please, take me sooner. Take your hand off of me, you him. You don't know what you want. You didn't want the rabbit either. But what's wrong with Harvey? You know, if Elwood and Myrtle May and I want to live with Harvey, what's it for you to notice? You don't even have to come around. It's none of your business. Oh, Elwood. There, there, Vita. Vita's a little tired out. She's done a lot today. Have it your own way. Just don't call me at the club again. No matter how big the animal is. Let's get out of here, Elwood. I hate this place. I wish I'd never seen it. Now see here. Whatever be the one, Doctor. Come on, Myrtle May, let's go. Oh! Look at this. That's funny. My wallet was here all along. I could have painted that cabin under myself. Hard. Come on, Myrtle May, let's get out of here. Come on, Elwood, let's go. Hurry up, hurry up, let's get out of here. Good night, Dr. Tully. Good night, Mr. Wilson. Uh, Dr. Tully, I've always known what my family thinks of Harvey, but I've often wondered, what does Harvey's family think of me? Oh, there you are. 